Hi everybody, welcome back. We're now into the synthesis basics. And so for a quick review here, let's look at the physical properties or the measurable properties of sound. Frequency is a physical property and is measured in Hertz. Frequency is the rate at which an acoustic generator, electrical signal or vibrating mass repeats within a cycle of positive and negative amplitude. If the rate of the vibration increases, the pitch gets higher. If the rate of the vibration decreases, the pitch gets lower. So frequency is the rate at which a sound moves through a full cycle, how high or how low, for example. One completed excursion of a wave is a cycle, and the number of cycles that occur within a second is measured in Hertz again. One way that we like to look at this, obviously, is with our EQ here. And so I've got this guy set up, and of course, many of you have worked with this. We just insert this here on an audio effect. But that EQ, or this parametric channel EQ that we are looking at here, this will allow us to be able to see many things. And so one of the things I like to look at is the harmonic spectrum. And we'll get into that here in a minute. Perceptual properties are created by the brain in response to the physical properties of sound. So for example, Pitch is the perceptual property associated with frequency. So what is pitch? The lowest fundamental frequency in a sound. So since the fundamental is the lowest frequency and is also perceived as the loudest, loudest, the ear identifies it as the specific pitch of musical tones. The individual partials are not heard separately, but are blended together by the ear into a single tone. So pitch is a measurement of sound made by our brains when we perceive frequency. Pitch is measure, measured in musical note values. So for example, the frequency 440 is perceived by our brain as A. So that's where we get to the harmonic spectrum, and that's where I was going to show you here with the, uh, the channel EQ. The harmonic spectrum and harmonic content, that's the factor that helps us tell the difference between instrumental sounds or voicings and the presence of frequencies, which are partials that exist in addition to the fundamental pitch being played. Partials that are higher than the fundamental frequency are called upper partials, or overtones. So for example, a sine wave has no overtones. Whole number multiples of the fundamental frequency are called harmonics. Our ears, our ears hear frequencies that are double multiples of the fundamental as being related. And this is known as the musical octave. They're known as even harmonics, because these frequencies are even multiples of the fundamental. Frequencies that are odd multiples of the fundamental are odd harmonics. Even harmonics are more pleasing and soothing to the ear, while odd harmonics are dissonant. And of course, many would say that, you know, well, why would you want to use odd harmonics? And obviously when it comes down to it, you know, uh, you know, some of my favorite music has, you know, some of the most distortion, you know, some of the, the dirtiest and crunchiest bass. And that's, you know, essentially, you know, much of that is odd harmonics, of course, right? So let's get into timbre. Timbre, all of the overtones are frequencies above the fundamental frequency. Timbre is the perceived sound quality of a musical tone, sound, or a musical note. So resonance is when the initial sound wave is passed through the body of an instrument in order to modify its pitch and timbre. So for example, the soundboard for a piano, and as you know, many of you know, you can get into a Bosendorf or a Steinway piano that's handmade with the soundboard, you know, in itself could be upwards of thirty, forty thousand dollars just that piece of wood that creates the resonance. The body of a violin, you know, could be upwards of millions of dollars, or a guitar, you know, you know, some of these guitars, these uh, vintage guitars because of the way that it resonates, because of what it does to the pitch and how it, it you know, articulates the timbre of the instrument. These instruments are, you know, tens of thousands of dollars, in some cases millions of dollars, right? So again, as review, amplitude, also a physical property, is determined by how much the pressure is a compression wave differs from the normal air pressure. For example, pluck, plucking a string harder increases the amplitude. Amplitude is the amount or intensity of the vibration. It's measured in decibels and is expressed as the height of the wave in the waveform theme, right? So amplitude essentially is how loud. And finally, in terms of our synthesis aspects, envelope. 
how the ampl amplitude changes over time, of course. The envelope represents the varying level of a sound wave over time and is broken down into four areas. Attack, decay, sustain, and release. And you'll find on many synthesizers, they'll give you these parameters as access points in order to shape your sound. ADSR is the envelope of a wave in conjunction with timbre, which helps establish the sound's unique individual quality. The envelope has a significant it has a significant influence on how we interpret sound. So signal envelope. The envelope of a signal can be measured in four ways. Again, attack, setting, it's a setting in an envelope that determines how long it will take for the envelope to go from its lowest to highest setting after a note is on. Decay, that's the setting in an envelope that determines how long it will take for the envelope to drop from its highest level to the level it will uh, maintain as long as the note is being held. Sustain is a setting in an envelope that determines how long it will remain before release. And release is a setting in an envelope that determines how long it will take for an envelope to drop to its lowest level after a note stops being played. And this is a typical ADSR for a piano. So when we hit that attack, it decays for a bit. And then as long as we hold that note down, and then we'll have our release point, of course, um, a piano is going to decay just a bit. But what happens in this particular case if we get what's called hold? While ADSR envelopes utilize attack, decay, and sustain and release, AHDSR adds what's called hold. Hold setting in an envelope determines how long it will remain at its highest level. Rather than decaying to the sustain level immediately after the initial peak as an ADSR, an AHDSR envelope allows you to set a duration that the envelope remains at the peak before starting the decay. The addition of a hold parameter gives you way more control over the instrument or sound and can be very useful for a variety of applications. So for example, you could have an 808 and you could just drop that thing and have that 808 hit for you know a minute if you wanted to. And normally an 808 is just going to be a transient hit, right? So very quickly then, let's just look at the oscillator section of some of these synthesizers. And so when I'm looking at a synthesizer, I'm just going to call up this retro synth because many of us have access to this if we've got logic, for example. As you can see here where it says 50%, my shape one and my shape two, these are very simple waveforms. So, if, you know, essentially what I'm clicking on, I'm switching between, as you can see, that looks like kind of like a triangle, right? And this looks like a square wave. And then as I shift this in, this is inverting that square to a pulse. And the same thing here, as you can see here, we've got some semblance of a triangle, triangle, square wave and on. But we basically have two oscillators in the system. And if I wanted to utilize them together, I could just set this toggle and put it right into the middle. So if I wanted to hear only oscillator two, I would take that, move that down to the bottom and I could shape that to maybe a triangle wave. Or if I only wanted to hear oscillator one, I would just shape this up to the top and then I could hear, you know, whatever I decide I want to do. One thing to note, if I want just noise, that's this here, that wave shape. So very quickly then, oscillator. What is an oscillator? It generates the fundamental end overtones, the VCO, right? So the oscillator section of a synthesizer generates a waveform. The one thing we want to note is, is that when it comes down to our overtones, in terms of a sine wave, there are no overtones. So electric oscillators used in analog instruments and synths, of course, software instruments, are simple waveforms, waves with a shape on an oscilloscope. We can see these shapes within you know, one cycle, of course. Usually sine, square, triangle, and sawtooth waves. So if I wanted to only see a sine wave, one thing that I like to see here in this particular case is that I've called up a sine wave here only, and I've also have this channel EQ so I can hear the harmonic spectrum or so that I can see it, of course. In this particular case, then, I'm just going to only call up the sine wave. And you, you could see there are no overtones. When we stop that sine wave, that sine wave is right at 220. Interesting, right? So with that no overtones, just simply that sine wave sitting in at 220. So if I went one octave up, that would be an A, 
and that would be at 440. So that's where we get that 440, you know, pitch where we're, you know, basically um, set to uh, 440 cycles per second. And so in the sense of all of our oscillators, if I continue on to our square waveform, contains only odd numbered harmonics. So let's go to our square. The second clip I have here is a square. Watch what happens. Look at there. And now we get those overtones, but in order for me to get to that square wave, I simply just went to the instrument. I went to my retro synth, and my retro synth, I just picked the square. So that is a simple shape, and that simple shape was created by an oscillator. In this particular case, the retro synth. And as you can see here, and that's its overtone series. It contains only odd numbered harmonics. The triangle wave, I've got the triangle wave next up, contains only the first few odd numbered harmonics. And here's our triangle. And of course, that's all I did was just pick the triangle in this particular case. And let's just play that back. And there it is. Now, we also have sawtooth, a waveform that contains both even and odd harmonics. And of course, sawtooth is going to sound a little bit more gritty, a little bit uh, more distorted. And then the next one is the pulse waveform. And that's the one I was just showing you. So as I would roll through here, it's a lot of fun. I can just, you know, come in and get this nice little pulse waveform and I can just find that here. So as we're rolling through, maybe you could just kind of sweep in and out to find the tone that you're looking for. Or maybe the next level for you would be using multiple oscillators together and to find out what you could find. In this particular case, I've got two pulse waveforms to try to create something, you know, really awesome. Now, maybe you may want white noise or and or pink noise. Now, why would that work? Well, there's a lot of cats, like for example, Kygo. That's a big part of how you're going to create a really nice anticipation or a drop is through white noise. You can open that white noise up, of course, and um, utilizing white noise, you'll find that you do have a white noise generator within Logic, and that's a utility plugin in this case. So if you wanted to use it, you could. It's all located here within your test oscillator. And so that's where I found all of these. I got all of these within my test oscillator, with my white noise and my pink noise. But in this exercise, in this exercise, I want to make sure that I'm analyzing exactly what that is. So let's look at white noise. And what is white noise again? Waveform that contains all possible overtones. So here's white noise. And let's look at what it looks like. There it is. Now, what is pink noise? A waveform that contains all possible frequencies, but they're rolled off at a higher frequency in order to sound more natural to the human ear. So we would expect that to be a little more subtle, right? Here is pink noise. And you can see how it's rolled off here, right? So one more time. White noise. and pink noise. Now, what happens when we start getting into natural elements? And that's the one thing that I really think is very important to note. What does a piano look like? What does a guitar look like? In this case, in terms of synthesis, we're always talking about these simple waveforms typically, right? But what would it look like if we were to actually have a piano? Here's the harmonic spectrum of a piano very quickly. Or the harmonic spectrum of a guitar, acoustic guitar. Or the harmonic spectrum of some strings. Look at those partials and all the overtones. Hopefully that helps. So in the case of our synthesizer sections, in order for us to create the sounds that we want, we're looking at electronic oscillators, and we're going to 
put these oscillators together, hopefully using multiple oscillators, maybe potentially detuning oscillators from, from uh, one to the other and, and shifting the frequency around in order to get some really neat stuff that you'd always dreamt of. We'll be continuing on. This is part one of our synthesizer section. And as far as our synthesis basics, I really do hope that helps. I hope that that's a good review for you guys. And let us know, of course, if you need anything. Please email, text. If you have any questions, please let us know. Take care, everybody.